Good morning. When I was high school, I was wondering why is it that the formula for finding the area of a circle is pi r squared? And why is it that whenever we deal with circle, there is always pi? In today's lesson, our goal is to derive the formula for the area of a circle. But before we can derive the formula for the area of a circle, we need to understand first what is the meaning of this pi and where does it come from. So we have here some activities to understand inductively the value of pi. So using a tape measure and some circles of different sizes, we are going to inductively rediscover the value of pi. First, let us measure the circumference and diameter of these three circles. The circumference is the distance around a circle and the diameter is the longest line segment from one side of a circle to the opposite side. Okay, so for this circle, let's measure its circumference. So I measure the distance around the circle and we get a value of about 13.6 13.6 for the diameter we got 4.3 then let's measure the circumference of this next circle I get about 10 and the diameter is about 3.1 the unit is inches and for the third circle let's get a bigger circle and go and I get here a value about 36.5 and for the diameter we get around 11.5 what we have here is the measurement of the circumference and diameter of three different sized circles we have a very big circle in relation to the other circles here we have the medium sized circle and we have the smaller circle here now my question is what do you think would be the ratio between the circumference and the diameter of these three different circles do you think the smaller circle will have a smaller ratio of its circumference over the diameter while the bigger circle might have a bigger ratio between its circumference and diameter. Now let's get our calculator and compute for the ratio. C divided by D. So 13.6 divided by 4.3 is 3.16. Now 10 divided by 3.1 gives us 3.23 and 36.5 divided by 11.5 equals 3.17 now look at this last column notice that for a big circle a medium sized circle and a smaller circle even if there is that variation in the sizes of the circle let me show the variation you have this circle this size and you have this bigger circle but despite the size difference the ratio between the circumference and the diameter of these circles are very close to each other in fact if we have a very precise measuring device and granting that we can do the measurement without error all these ratios would be 
approximately 3.1415 and so on. And this is now the value that we assign to the symbol pi. So pi, therefore, is the ratio between the circumference and the diameter of any circle. Big circle, small circle, very, very small circle. The ratio between the circumference and the diameter would always be this value, 3.1415 and so on. This is a non-terminating decimal, non-repeating decimal, but we just get the first four digits. Now, if you have a circle, and this is the diameter, from the center of the circle going to the edge of the circle, we call that as the radius, and there, this is also the radius. And one diameter is equivalent to two radius. So D is equal to twice the radius. And from that, we can rewrite this part here to be pi is equal to C instead of this D that becomes 2R twice the radius. So from here, we can solve for C by multiplying pi and 2R. So we have C equals pi times 2R, which we can rewrite as C equals 2 pi R. Now, R is a variable, whereas 2 and pi are constants. Pi has a fixed value, a constant value of approximately 3.14. Now, let's move on to the derivation of this formula A equals pi R squared. If you have this circle, how do you find the area of this circle? Now, by definition, area is the number of square units that can cover this circle. But covering a circular space with square units is an impossible task. Our problem is at the edge that is curving, you cannot exactly cover it with unit squares. Even if we attempt, instead of using these sizes of unit squares, even if we attempt to cover this part with smaller squares, still we will not be able to completely cover this circle with squares. So that is the problem. How can we find the area of a circle knowing that by definition finding the area of a surface means we are going to cover that surface with square units. So what are we going to do to be able to find the area of this circle since there's a problem covering the curved side. If we can devise a way to make this circle approximate an object in such a way that we can cover it with square units. And the solutions that mathematicians devise early on is to cut the circle into sectors like this. And once you cut the circle into sectors like that, you'll be forming something that looks like this. I cut this circle into half and then cut along these lines and then I can rearrange them this way. We can alternate
we can arrange them alternately like this. If I'm going to draw this one, it will look like this. So that if I draw this alternating sectors of the circle, we'll have a figure that may look like this. So if we can further cut these sectors into very, very small pieces, then the limiting shape that this can form, if we arrange those sectors alternately like this, would be a rectangle. It would form a rectangle if we cut them into very, very small pieces. So if you cut them into very, very small pieces, then the curve would appear to be more straight. The curve will appear to be more straight because the sectors would be very, very small. Now, in terms of our circle, original circle, I cut this into two and I open up. So from a semicircle like this, we open up. What is now this distance? So since I cut the circle into two equal parts, it follows therefore that this distance is one half the distance around the circle. And the distance around the circle is what we call as the circumference. So this line now would be one half of that. So one half the circumference. And where is the other half? It's here. So you have these two. This is one half circumference at the top, and the other half would be at the bottom. But what does this length represent? So in our circle, this length is represented by this radius. So this length is the radius of the circle. Now, since this shape is a rectangle, we can find now the area of this rectangle as the product of the length and the width. So, for the area of this rectangle, we now get A equals the length, which is one half C. And this distance, so the length times the width, the width is the R. But early on, we said that C is equal to 2 pi R. So by substitution, we have 1 half. Instead of C, we use its equivalent value 2 pi R. That's the C. And then this R is here. So 1 half is this. The C is 2 pi R. So that's the 2 pi R. Then R. Finally, we have A equals 1 half times 2, you'll be able to cancel out the 2, so you have 1, times pi is pi, r times r is r squared. This is now the famous formula that we always encounter when we are looking for the area of a circle.